Hollywood is in deep trouble towards the end of the year. I mean, just taking a look at the box office right now, depending on when this story ends up getting released or anything like that. Um, the reigning defending box office champion right now is Venom 3, you know, the worst performing in the trilogy that, you know, Hollywood was trying to write off, mostly because it wasn't really pushing the message. It was just a classically bad movie. But yeah, right now, at time of recording, I guess I'll date this a little bit. Yeah, it has its second consecutive box office W for the weekend and taking a look at the competition that's on the horizon i mean there's not much out there that could dethrone it in the near future like the next quote-unquote big release depending on how uh, depending on its release schedule i couldn't find much out of it but red one it's um dwayne johnson uh jk simmons it's a christmas movie like that comes out mid feb or i'm sorry mid november november 15th it comes out it's either a limited release or it's a netflix game i like i'm not entirely sure but the next big release that's coming out well it's it's wicked and ugh, gladiator 2 bro those are coming out the 22nd in time for thanksgiving it'll be it'll be interesting to see how both of those actually perform and while i'm probably never going to see wicked my entire life and the other half of that double billing makes me vis er, viscerally ill. Gladiator 2 is just an affront to every one of my senses. Hope it bombs. Mostly because I don't think it's going to be good. Gladiator, the original, the only Gladiator is so good, man. It's something that you don't need a sequel to especially from who's putting it out like Ridley Scott hasn't uh, hasn't added to his legacy with any of his late stage iterations Prometheus Alien Covenant bro bro or even his unique and original IPs Napoleon remember that bomb came out last year like I don't have any faith for that but there was one movie that I did have a little bit of faith of when I heard about it the first time around and that was this one right here Lord of the Rings the War of the Rohirrim finally something being put out by Warner Brothers in the Lord of the Rings universe, adapting something from the appendices. Oh, wow, interesting. Trying to wash away the filth that Amazon and Lord of the Rings had created previously back in 2022. Obviously, heard about this before season two came around. So, yeah, this had there been any reason to remain optimistic, this would be anything more than just a repurposed story to be a vehicle for some a mad girl bossing could have been one of the good films to come out this year because holy christ man like you take a look at the rev er, you take a look at the releases in 2024 everybody was thinking it was gonna be pretty bad okay maybe maybe there could be a couple of highlights and yeah all things considered there were some hits inside out 2 is the highest grossing animated film of all time i don't think anybody had that one on their bingo card it making over a billion dollars and it being that successful nobody's seen that coming and then of course deadpool and wolverine which is like oh that'd be a good bellwether to see if there's any life left if there are left in superheroes and it's like oh there is 1.5 million 1.1.3 million, or billion rather it's like okay i guess for event movies because they ended up following that up with you know agatha all alone just showing that oh uh, marvel marvel's not doing so hot now of course disney has a couple of other releases to come out at the end of the year moana 2 is very likely to make a lot of money especially after inside out 2 but i think probably the good weather check on that and the health of that company is going to be with mufasa the lion king prequel not an animated fair but a live action quote unquote live action even though it's all going to be cg so is it really live action or is it animated but yeah that's going to be christmas fair this was supposed to be released in the interim right this war the rohirrim the tale of helm hammerhand which is super cool when we went over how this was eventually just going to be repurposed as being a girl boss story. Like we went over the tale that they could have told, but decided that they didn't want to because Philippa Boyens, who's going to be writing this tripe, was really engaged by the uh, daughter of Helm Hammerhand, who doesn't have a name. And she thought that that would be a really cool story. So telling the story of Hera, who they name right here, how she's going to be the one to lead an army of shield maidens into battle. So actually, um, Helm's Deep should really be Hera's Deep. And I want to die even just thinking about this. And then you see this news right here, where now they're going to be puppeting the corpse of Christopher Lee, running back and bastardizing some of his lines from the original trilogy. I hate you guys for doing this. Or of the Rohirrim producer, Philippa Boyens, has confirmed that they will be bringing back the late Christopher Lee, ugh, who died in 2015, to voice the wizard Saruman Hayes in upcoming animated film nearly 200 years before the events.
of Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings trilogy. Uh, the Kenji Kaniyama directed animation will follow the story of Helm Hammerhand, a legendary king of Rohan, voice, er, voiced by Brian Cox, uh, yeah, who faces yeah, con er, conflict with Wolf, the leader of the Dundalings. Um, speaking with Wondering.net, yes, uh, Boyens explained how they were able to use Lee's voice, who portrayed Saruman, yes, in Jackson's Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit films, right? After, yeah, getting permission from his late wife, Giddy. When we reached out uh, to Giddy, Lady Lee, who's sadly no longer with us, uh, she said, The thing that I think Peter felt in his heart, Peter Jackson, that is, uh, which was that Sir Christopher would have wanted this. Oh, yes, after they had that gigantic falling out after you know, Saruman's death in uh, Return of the King got cut from the theatrical version, the inferior version of Return of the King, they had a giant falling out. But then eventually, yeah, they patched things up in The Hobbit. But now she's... Now she's recanting a story from a dead woman who can't verify this. <sighs> See, man, like outside of hearing that this story is going to be girl bossing, seeing the trailer of how Helm Hammer had just big ups his daughter saying, oh, you're so wise. You're so strong. You're such a great leader. We know what's coming. We've seen this stuff before. So he already kind of turned me off to it. And then, yeah. To puppet the corpse of Christopher Lee, it's like, uh, I'm I, I, I'm done, bro. I don't want to see this anymore. And especially how this was supposed to kick off more content, how they're going to try to make, uh, because they can't be helped at this point in time, Lord of the Rings into this big franchise where they just tell a bunch of different stories. It's like, I guess it could be worse. Amazon could own the rights and they could be the ones making it. So I guess this is better than the alternative. But still, this is another one of those situations where the people who, yeah, made some great things in the past have returned to a franchise and they just don't have it anymore. They barely had it because there is a good movie in the Hobbit, or in the Hobbit trilogy. It's just not three good movies. It's not nine hours of content. There's about two and a half hours of quality festoon amidst that over bloated under good tripe. So no, them coming back 10 years removed from that, 20 years removed from the greatness that was the original trilogy. I don't have any hope for any of this stuff, okay? And no, the Hunt for Gollum movie. It's like, okay, Andy Serkis is coming back to the role. It's like, great, okay, there's only one Gollum. He should probably be that. Fantastic. But he's also going to be directing it. And it's like, okay, cool. So he has full creative control over the project. Yeah, let's not forget the last time he was the director and that was for Venom, Let There Be Carnage. Bro, he's great as Gollum. Is he going to be good as a director? I'm kind of seen his track record. In September of 2022, Sir Ian McKellen raised eyebrows when he seemingly let slip the news that not only had he been contacted by Warner Brothers regarding a potential return to the role, or to his role, sorry, as the Lord of the Rings iconic Gandalf. Uh, not that, no, Ian McKellen, okay? Like, I want to... I want him in Gandalf is just about in everything, okay? Like, I want him to be Gandalf in the third season of House of the Dragon, for Christ's sakes. Like, as long as he's willing to do it, he will be fantastic. It just all depends on how bad the writing is, you know, just shout out the Hobbit trilogy. But it's just, I also remembered that um, the big payoff to Rings of Power season two is that Gandalf got his name. I want to die. Uh, but also that the already announced franchise film, The Hunt for Gollum, would be at least a two-parter. Okay, well... It's like, it's adapting, what is it, a couple of paragraphs during a very specific period in time. It's like, oh great. That's about the studio's plans for the franchise's future during an appearance on the British uh, morning sh uh, morning news show this morning. The actor told his host, well, I know, uh, all I know is uh, they called me up and they said these films are going to happen. Many are going to be about Gollum. Andy Serkis, who played Gollum, is going to direct. And uh, there's going to be a script arriving sometime this new year, that, uh, ne that next year, and I can judge whether I I want to go back. I was like, oh, oh, Sir Ian McKellen's. Oh, I'm sorry. Unfortunately for fans of the, of the corrupted creature, which yeah, I love Gollum in the trilogy. Okay. And even, yeah, Riddles in the Dark and, you know, the first Hobbit movie, it's very good. Arguably one of the best scenes in the entire trilogy. Just don't know if we need a full movie dedicated to Aragorn finding him. It's like, I, I, okay, especially two though. Uh, but Philippa Boyens has uh, now confirmed that uh, not only will The Hunt for Gollum be a single film, but also that uh, McKellen's suggestion otherwise, while an honest mistake, a fool, but 
an honest fool, oh, wasn't completely out of left field. Speaking with the subject in a recent interview with Empire Boyens, who's currently back at Warner Brothers, yeah, working on the future J.R. Tolkien-related projects, he told the outlet's Ben Travis, I can definitely tell you, it isn't two films. Yeah, probably because the first one's going to be about Gollum and the second one's going to be about Aragorn. And yeah, we're going to have old-ass Viggo Mortensen, who's, again, you know, Aragorn, very good, exceptionally good. It's just, he was already in his, like, mid-40s, and now he's going to be in his mid-60s. It's not really going to work, especially when the story is supposed to be taking place during the time of fellowship. Like, what are we doing? There's a genuine misunderstanding that happened because we've begun to work conceptually on two different live-action films. Great. Uh, the, uh, the writer behind the upcoming Lord of the Rings anime film, The War of the Rohirrim. The first being Hunt for Gollum, the second one is still to be confirmed. So yeah, it's going to be a continuation of that story, and she's just trying to do damage control for that, which is also what she's going to have to do now that people are getting closer and seeing, oh god, what is the type of quality we can expect from this reassembled team moving forward. Epic fantasy author John A. Douglas trashes The Lord of the Rings, The War of the Rohirrim origin for Hera. Yeah... Because this was the call of Philippa Boyan. She was really engaged by Hera and her story that she could tell. Even, uh, shout out to Random Film Talk, a, a channel that I really like. And I think that he's very good. He's done a lot of work in the realm of Tolkien. And when he was doing his, um, I think it was the Two Towers comparison, whether or not the extended edition, if uh, if the extended scenes warranted their inclusion and either added to or detracted from the overall quality of the Two Towers. Yeah, it would have been that one because, okay, because uh, some of the behind the scenes stuff from... Miranda Otto, uh, the actor, or the actress, sorry, behind Eowyn, and Philippa was in there a couple of different times, and they had some dumbass takes that were in there, bro. Like, uh, Random Film Talks, the video is like three plus hours long. I highly encourage you go watch it. It's very well put together, and the stuff that he found on that one just uh, really, really makes me think that this is gonna suck. Epic fantasy author John A. Douglas trash the origin of Hera that uh, Warner Brothers is using in The Lord of the Rings, The War of the Rohirrim. A companion book to the film uh, was released, though, God and provides an origin for Hera. Oh no, an, or yeah, an original character for the film. As also the main protagonist at the original states in just 19 summers, Hera is the youngest of film Hammerhand's three children and the only girl. As the daughter of a noble line, she is a valuable pawn in the game of king making and of building alliances, and seems a destined, or destined for a life as the wife of a Gondorian princeling whose children will know nothing of Rohan's ways. And then they go on with the rest of the story where Helm Hammerhand beats the piss out of everybody, and it's awesome. It continues, born under a harvest moon, her life was all too soon marked by tragedy when her mother died in childbirth. Oh, Christ. Princess was raised alongside her two brothers by a warrior king and could ride before she could walk. And she's going to be the best and the fastest because you remember when Arwen said to uh, Aragorn that she's the fastest rider that they have and therefore she could be the one to take Frodo or Frodo. Jesus. Frodo. To her father in Rivendell, remember that? Because that that that's why good callback. We love key janglings. God! The more I think about this, the more pissed off I get. Uh Princess, yeah, we raise her on her two brothers, Warrior King, ride before she could walk, before becoming uh, one of the fastest riders in the kingdom. Of course, of course. As a young girl, she became friends with Wolf, the son of Lord Freca in the West March. Uh, the two often played at fighting, teasing, and laughing with each other. Hera is now a young woman and, a skill and skilled with the sword, because of course she is! Fuck. Wild, adventurous, and carefree. And of course, because, you know, she has to have a side braid, because a side shave would be far too obvious. Ugh! Yeah, she's wild. Adventurous, carefree, Hera knows her own mind and will not allow her, li er, her life to be planned for her. Whatever the reason, she is more likely to be found wearing riding clothes than when summoned to attend her father's council in Medusel. Uh, she will be persuaded to go, is persuaded into a long gown with ribbons to tie back her unruly long red hair. Oh, you guys have heard this stuff before, right? Douglas, the author of The Black Crown, Trash the Origin of the Depiction, writing on Exum Art for the War of the Rohirrim Companion book, are released in Yeesh. Might be the most cliched. She's not like other girls' origins I've ever read. Exactly. He added basic bitch girl boss romance. Yeah, romancy lead character energy. Just bleeds Tolkien, doesn't it? It's, it's um, man, it's kind of infuriating. This could have been good.
Could have been real good. So not only not only are you adding a girl boss into this, you're also wasting a really good story that you could have told. But no, no, of course. At least he wrote, yeah, A. Eowyn's arc. It was novel at the time. Yeah, exactly. And here's the thing. Eowyn's an enduring character from the source material and from Peter Jackson's original trilogy. She slayed the Witch King, for Christ's sakes. He had the line, had she not been developed as well and her arc not been as excellent as it was, I am no man. He rips off her helmet and stabs a Witch King in the face after, of course, the, you know, the very timely assist by Mary out there in Pelennor Fields. She had that. People cheered. People still remember that moment and quote it fondly. They will try to contrive something for Hera. She will have, you, you, you mark my words right now when you're hearing this, she will have her I am no man moment. Garon fucking teed. And it's going to be shit because she's just going to immediately come in and be the I am no woman or I'm not like most girls. I'm a shield maiden of Rohan. I will not be bored up until age has robbed me of my youth. I will fight for my freedom. I will fight for my kingdom. And she'll eventually become queen of Rohan or some bullshit like that. It's gonna suck. I would love to be proved wrong. I hope this is good. And just also know that this is something being made in 2024. Warner Brothers is over the top of it. And of course, these aren't the same creatives that created the greatest trilogy, the greatest piece of media of all time. These are the same people that collaborated on The Hobbit and think making a Gollum movie is a great idea. So with all that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after him. Take care, everyone.